There is this tendency in the mainstream media to treat the fight over these issues as a dispute between parties that just can't get along. The problem with that approach is that pretending that both sides are equivalent here makes it impossible to honestly describe reality. America is not starkly divided on culture war issues or whatever. Things like abortion or whether trans people are allowed to exist in society are questions of civil rights. Using the term culture war really cheapens what's at stake, I think. Because this is not about whether Mr. Potato Head is gender neutral now or whatever. This is about fundamental human rights. And I know if you're writing in a mainstream media outlet, you want to appear balanced in what you say, but the truth isn't always balanced. If you listen to this podcast on the regular, you are well aware that I'm not a fan of Democrats, not at all. But Republicans have become so white-knuckled and fanatic in their effort to take the country as far back as possible that part of their beliefs have become irreconcilable with civil society. And their vision of what victory looks like, a political victory for them, is not merely tax cuts or a higher military budget or whatever. It's a fantasy of sadistic domination. That is also why QAnon is such a phenomenon among the right. Because what, according to QAnon, is going to happen in the end, when the storm comes and the Satan-worshipping, child-molesting Democrats and celebrities and groomers are going to be trialed and executed, is not that different from what the Republican movement wants to happen anyway. Now, that is not to say that your grandpa, who has been voting Republican for 40 years or whatever, is the same as some Republican members of the House where you just see this unbridled fanaticism. But every vote cast for that party and every dollar donated is in service of that project of domination. This is what People like Nancy Pelosi don't get when they repeat over and over and over again that America needs a strong Republican Party. The Republican Party under Trump didn't transform into something else. It self-actualized. It became its true self in a process that kicked into gear with the election of Barack Obama that was just earth-shattering for Republicans and culminating in January 6th. And mind you... When Nancy Pelosi says that she wants a strong Republican Party, that's that's not a fluke. You know? I think she said this three or four times now publicly, so she clearly thinks this is a killer line. Well, I just want to put a gun in my mouth at the thought that this is supposed to be the stopgap against American fascism. Oh, my God. Jim Clyburn, who is the majority whip.